So this next example, uh, we tried, to, uh, we, we worked with uh, a clothing company to see if we could somehow hijack uh, the, the supply chain uh, of, of manufacturing uh, products, which is taking a, a relatively large toll on, on the planet. Let's just take a look at that one. provoke a sort of a business transformation or maybe accelerate a way out for an industry that's that's creating a, a, a you know a big negative uh, have a big negative impact on, on the planet and as you know as, as as a company we understand that a sense of purpose is a is a powerful agent of change it's all, it's a good thing for the company culture it's it's a good thing for the bottom line if you will but one of the issues we have with purpose and CSR is, is mainly just you know a marketing exercise. It's, it's basically bullshit. You have um, you know for the consumers who say, hey, we're going to give all this money away to school somewhere in the third country, but please keep drinking our bottled whatever drinks over here. Uh, we'll put a little green leaf on it so you know that we're giving money away, but we're not actually changing our supply chain, which would be the sensible thing to do if we agreed that we needed to improve the state of affairs. Uh, a lot of the corporates are reacting to regulatory change. So someone says, well, you know, we think you have a too high ingredient list of this, or we really don't like your privacy settings in digital media, or we really do not uh, like the way that you're shopping all these things around the world. So regulatory change comes in and forces uh, corporations to make change and then quickly turn it into like a CSR spiel, uh, whereby I try to claim some sort of uh, virtue. Uh, some virtual claiming, but in reality it's just a necessity for them to, to stay in the market, so that's also bullshit. And then where we're trying to focus is, is on the business transformation side of things, the companies that are actually willing to undergo a true like, supply chain change and, and look at themselves as a kind of a more holistic, uh, holistic or look at the process in, in, a, in a more coherent way. Uh, and also we realized that from our audience uh, around the world, there's a very, you know, our audience would love to hear what's going on in all these big corporations. Like, the future, is, you could say, is driven by CEOs. It's not really driven by governments or all the organizations that we thought we elected to take care of business. A lot of, at least when we call our audience, they, 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 there's this sense that change happens, but it happens because the CEO is dictating something, and then governments are trying to play catch up in order to get a popular vote. On something, I'm not saying that's the truth, but I'm saying that's the perception of, of a big chunk of our audience. And what we are, so there's a there's a shift in, in, in the perception of authority and, and what things are happening. But there's very very little content, very little media out there about the facts of how these organizations have an impact 
on, on everyone's uh, reality and life uh, and on the planet. So we were more focused in, in this uh, project I'm talking about today about the, the business transformation and about the need for us all to kind of embrace and understand what's going on with all these organizations. Um, we based it on, on a few human truths as well. Um, we, we like to work with this idea of the mental models of the company should drive the business models and not the other way around. So in some sort of attempt of trying to break free from the HR uh, Excel spreadsheet where everyone is just reduced to a senseless invoiceable unit or resource in, in the company and just allow ourselves to at least once in a while have a more blue sky uh, approach to like what could be done if we set ourselves free for a little moment and and try and rethink our entire process and also criticizing ourselves and what we've done uh, previously. So a uh, kind of a free influence space uh, where we can where we can work together. And mental model obviously I think you're all familiar with, but you know one easy example uh, for a mental model is like if you've been working really late, so you're the last person left in the office, everyone has left for the, all the lights are turned off. Uh, you go down to the parking lot to either get your car or your bike, uh, and it's very dark, it's very late, and you're kind of walking across this empty parking lot. And as you do so, uh, as, you, as you walk towards your vehicle of choice, you can hear footsteps coming up behind you, and you kind of, okay, then you kind of you notice that, there's no other sound, so you can't help but noticing that. And suddenly, as, as, as you walk, you know, you don't really change anything, but just, just you get more concerned about getting to your to your bike. And then the footstep, the pace picks up a little bit, and you can hear that they're moving out or ready towards you. And this is kind of, now you get a little bit excited, you can feel your pulse going up a little bit. You start walking, you know, pick up your own pace, you walk a little bit faster towards, uh, towards your, your, your bike. And now you can hear the footsteps are running, they're running directly against you up from behind, and now you get fucking terrified, and you start to remember that you are chuck or whatever it is, because you can kind of do some sort of self-defense. Someone runs up to you, grabs you on the shoulder, turns you around, it's an old friend from school, you haven't seen it for 10 years, you just give them a big hug, you go out, you have coffee, coffee turns in, or I should say tea, you go have tea, tea turns into a beer, beer turns into the best night out that you have, for the last 10 years of your life. So you had a magnificent experience that evening. Nothing in reality changed during your leaving the office and going out and having the night of, of your life. Reality didn't change, but your perception of fear and barriers and what would potentially hurt you changed quite a bit. So all of these risks of failing, all of that stuff is in, inside ourselves. Reality doesn't really care. And if we can find a way where we can mobilize and change the perspective a little bit on, on how we think about our own business and maybe put some of those fears about life aside, then we can perhaps move on in more productive ways. Same as like, you know, when, when someone is saying you can run a marathon below two, two hours, like faster than two hours, everyone will say it's impossible until someone does it, and then suddenly it just becomes the new reality and we all buy into that. So this idea of mental models can be frustratingly hindering us from doing great shit, but it can also be, if we are aware again of, of those barriers that we set ourselves as an organization, we can also break them down and at least, you know, once in a while have a conversation about what are the, what are the mental models that are keeping us from doing great stuff. Uh, you would say things like Airbnb, Uber, some of those uh, industries and companies have utilized the notion of mental models in order to break down the barriers for success. If you can allow some of those to drive the business model and not the other way around, not always thinking, okay, we need to achieve this quarter X, Y, C, and then let's find a mental model so we can quicker get to that target. But if you sometime allow uh, yourself to turn it on its head, I think from a, from a leadership position, you have a much more fruitful uh, approach and you can rethink your entire business structure while you're still rolling out the old one. So offering a, a bit of a change of perspective is, will be the result of this, and I'm, I'm going to uh, talk a little, little, little bit about Chains Incorporated now, which is the end result of, of this uh, journey that I, that I just took you through. Uh, in general, media has a massive role to play when it comes to understanding the world around us, of course, right? And right now, we are mostly fed all these negative stories about where the world is headed, and part of that is, is that you know, good stories sell better than bad stories. So the business model of the current media landscape is you measure on traffic, clicks, whatever. 
So you know, you would take your workforce and you would ask them to create content that would drive traffic so that you can satisfy advertisers and keep the revenue flowing. Everyone knows that that business model is over. It died many, many years ago. But all the media companies are kind of you know, trying to still make that work. And it is working if you allow yourself to do some you know, new thinking around it. But the traditional, one of the results of that is that we are constantly fed the types of stories that we generate the most traffic, and a lot of them has to do with human nature and our interest in uh, doom and gloom and despair. So, you know, we didn't invent this concept, but the notion of a hope gap that actually allows us to positively work towards solutions uh, gives us all this idea of powerlessness. I don't know how to fix the climate crisis, right? Because I, you know, I'm, I'm just an individual in a big world, and everyone, everything is burning. And if I save some of you know, the plastic, for example, instead of throwing it out, isn't it true that China is just like throwing like hundreds of millions of tons of plastic out? So what little help will it do that, that I do something? This, this massive hope gap um, uh, surrounded to like this information. And what we were trying to identify was to see like there are some societal issues where we have to come together as um, citizens, as big companies and organizations and as governments and everyone has to try and move in the right direction. We have to find this neutral space where, we, where we're on the same team and where we are trying to positively uh, work to close the whole gap. So you can say a big uh, mission for us at Change Incorporated is to try and close the, the frustration and the hope gap by admitting that as a media company we have a big role to play in, in what type of information we serve up. Uh, and the funny thing is we have this hope gap when in reality we need some solutions we believe in. And the solutions are out there. I mean, if you are not worried about uh, state of affairs, you're not following the news, but if you don't have optimism to, and, and after having met the people you know, who are concerned with fixing the climate crisis, you simply don't have a pulse. I mean, there are fantastic solutions out there. We just kind of need to shift our focus and start working with, with some of these buses. Not very easy, but but we are trying to make this project, you know, our little uh, way of, of looking at it. So, obviously, the misinformation, there's no sort of shortage of it. Uh, there's a weak push from experts, you know, it's, it's, this kind of content is boring. It's super boring to talk about personal health. That doesn't rock the boat the same way as some Los Angeles scandal or a president, you know, shouting obscenities on Twitter every day, right? So there's really no great push. Uh, in the in the good stories, uh, you know, reducing plastic as an individual, as a society is kind of boring. We all think we know that that story. So you know, the businesses are unable to monetize uh, the climate change. There's also a really weak pull. You know, companies will just say, well, you know, we're just giving uh, consumers whatever they want, and once they start demanding better products, we'll we'll have to innovate and, and make the products uh, uh, the products better. And also, the politicians like say they can only move as quick as their, as their uh, audiences and, and as their electorate, and uh, kind of, we're all kind of giving us this good excuse to hold back a little bit. So, tons of reasons for us to get stuck in, in all of this. Uh, a lot of it has to do with like some of these stories just aren't compelling. Uh, a lot of these stories has to do with someone saying, you have to stop doing X, Y, C, rather than saying you can continue like this, this I think the idea is kind of the notion of hedonistic uh, uh, modernism, where you can continue to, to do something that you feel as an individual is exciting and fun and great for your personal development, but you're not killing off the planet while, while doing it. I think the next one is a kind of an opening uh, reel for, for Change Incorporated. Let's take a look. Yeah. Our world is changing. Faster. It may seem like everyone's a pessimist, and only a fraction of us believe things will get better. Unchecked industrialization and consumerism is destroying us. We don't feel that much, but this isn't working. In April, we launched Change Incorporated, a new purpose-driven media company for advice. Our aim is to positively impact people's behaviour and 
and tackle some of society's biggest issues, funded by the companies at the heart of the matter. Our first mission, to encourage people to quit cigarettes. Success will be measured by one simple criteria, an increase in the number of UK smokers who quit cigarettes. The question is, can we get to a point where cigarettes are almost like the coin relic, the way, say, pipes smoking is today? The fact of the matter is, most people can't just quit, and that's it. We do this to engage in editorially independent storytelling. Every day, you wake up with a blank sheet of paper. That's a beauty, right? Every day you wake up, you say, right, I can actually change me. Our funders don't control our content. The editorial control is ours. We call it funded content. The Quick Cigarette Mission is reaching millions of people who are positively embracing this challenge. We ask questions, provide facts, and document change. So that's what quick cigarettes and vices involvement is. It's just encouragement. Yeah, I mean, the last thing that's meant to have is people beating them over the head. It's difficult enough anyway. We are making headlines, and it's already making an impact. Just like that. This is only the beginning. With Change Incorporated set to go global, the world is changing. Let's make it for the better. Oh, we do like our wheels, don't we? So, in all seriousness, though, we've created this platform where we will work with the industry who will accept funding from uh, conglomerates in order to go and address some of the issues created by the industry and try to find meaningful ways out of, out of uh, these situations. It's ed editorial independent, so it's made as a contribution to an editorial independent platform. The first mission that has been live since April in the UK is uh, quitting cigarettes, uh, and we're seeing um, a quite positive, like, so we're leaning on the same methodology for, for measuring quit attempts, uh, that is also from, from the same company who's also delivering the statistics for the UK government, and right now we're seeing some quite positive indicators after having been live for half, about half a year, where you're twice as likely to quit uh, if you've been exposed uh, to change incorporated than if you haven't, obviously, since 50% of everyone who smokes dies from it or dies from smoking related disease, accelerating this number with 100% is a massive uh, societal health benefit that will hopefully be reflected in the spending of NHS and public health interest. So we want to be, we want to define some areas where we can really catalyze change and, and work with delivering a mission level KPI only. So we are only being measured by the amount of people that we help quit. There's no amount of like videos produced or, you know, we, we obviously need to reach uh, a lot of people in the UK, but the idea, and again, like rethinking from a mental model, if we could agree with these funders on one main KPI that could be measured by an independent third party, then everything else would need to follow. Like if we agree that it's about the amount of people who are quitting cigarettes, then we need to do a lot of out of home in, in order to get people into this new platform. We need to do tons of content. We need to find a content strategy that isn't telling people to quit because we know that that kind of stuff is, doesn't work. You know, there's you're only 6% of people who want to quit that actually succeed every year. So we thought maybe we could use empathy and content in order to create all this boring content for the, for the, uh, more than 90% that actually fail every year. Um, and also moving from telling people why they st should stop doing a certain thing into why they can't uh, do it anyway. And obviously uh, we have one mission that has been live, but we're also planning moving into the energy sector. We're planning on moving into mobility, uh, on sugar consumption, in order to just create like a canvas of content that is quietly just you know, no, it, it takes a lot of resource to say if something bad or something exciting or something news came out about sugar or cigarettes or oil. You know, media is usually just running the latest report on whatever came out, but very few editorial teams actually have the resources to say, oh, that's interesting. 
this, you know, these people over here saying this, these people over here saying that. Can we just take a look and fact check all of this and maybe put that together in a more coherent way so that we can create content where people, you know, a smarter audience should make smarter choices? So that's one of the key differences in, in our approach. We create hundreds of videos, hundreds of activations, events, articles around this notion. And it seems to be, you know, our indication is that it is that working on a, on, a, on a full territory like the UK. Um, so we define it as a purpose-driven platform to challenge and document corporate transformation, which sounds like something that young people wouldn't be interested in at all, but this is a massive white space. There literally isn't any real business transformation content out there for young people that isn't driven by, that doesn't look like financial science. So we found this to be something that has a you know, high level of engagement and where people are really spending a lot of time with both the business transformation side of things, but also looking at the more emotional nudging uh, methodology of, of getting people to change uh, a negative behavior. Um, we call this post-CSR, you know, we coined this phrase, but what comes after all the CSR stuff when you actually have to take the pill and go and, and deploy these uh, supply chain changes in order to live up to your all your promises of, of doing good. And we wanted to create a neutral space where people are usually like in fight uh, with each other, could come together and we could start to have a conversation about the possibilities and opportunities that we're facing, rather than just being each, you know, uh, fighting each other from, from either side of, of the road. And that's what we're hoping uh, to create. We see more and more critics. Our job is not to have a point of opinion. Our job is literally to go and ask different opinions and try to get that information together in a, in a, in a you could say, way that makes sense or can be, uh, can be engaging for, for an audience. Uh, so you could say basically we're just pro-facts, we're pro-science, and we want to put all of these uh, elements together in, in the content that we do. I think the good and positive things about you know the, the, the crisis that we're that we're facing as as a planet is we're all in it together and the notion of prohibition or the notion of just like saying no to each other is I think we're going to see that break down a little bit. I think we need communication. We need even better interactions. We need to kind of lower our defenses and, and use the strength that we have from the inside and our integrity in order to face each other and and uh, create. Uh, work that has that has meaning uh, for all of us. So, in summary, we believe that you should change what you control. These are some of the philosophies that we try to manage by change what you control. It's a lot easier to not end up as an isn't just a genius if you actually publish and if you actually start, even if you start small. Culturally strategy. So, I love the big gold rim strategic decks, and they're necessary sometimes in order to go and sell projects, and they're also necessary for the organizations to work and to optimize and suboptimize and what have you. But at the end of the day, it's going to be the culture of, of the place that you run that has the biggest impact on how you can make these hyper jumps into the future and doing something else. And then we work with uh, the mental models that drive uh, business models. That's really all I got. Thank you, guys. Thank <laughs> you.